All right. I'll see you just a little bit later, everybody. Okay. Mm. Enjoy. Uh, enjoy the void. Enjoy the void. <laughs> I will. Look.
Today, we will conclude our series of talks, which was entitled Returning to Source. And there'll be opportunity for questions and I hope some satisfactory answers in a short while. But I have a story initially that I would like to share with you. A layman approached a rabbi and said, I wish to meet God. Can you tell me how to meet God? And the rabbi said, run as far as you can, as fast as you can. And when you become exhausted and you can run no more, then you will meet God. And he said, if I can do that with running, can I do that with sitting? And he said, indeed you can sit and God will come into your presence. You see what the rabbi knew that the layman didn't know was he is already connected to his God. And it is an illusion that you are not connected to God. So the activity that you undertake is not the point. The point is releasing yourself from doing the activity and dedicating it to the service of your God. So you may meet your God digging a hole or counting money or even picking corn in the field. It is not the activity, but it is the intention which strips away the illusion of unconnectedness. It is a falsehood to think you are not connected to God. It is the truth. You are part of the great whole. What is keeping you from that understanding is no more than illusion. And if you lived your day letting go of the activities that must be done, but doing them with the intention of being one with your creator, then you would consider yourself to be liberated, to be free, to be unbound by the physical world, to be not held, but to be one with the Almighty. So the word surrender at times becomes difficult to understand. But this is the point. The example I give you now, that surrender is the handing over the claim of any benefit to yourself, but giving it all to God. And you work with that fully in your mind. 
how can you say you are not part of the one then? Now, there is a second story which continues on from this a little. A man had four children. Let us say they are all boys, but it does not matter. The first child, the eldest, had been through education and is now earning a living at a career and bringing some of that money home to the family. The second child is just finishing his study and has not yet picked or achieved a career that he wishes to achieve. The third child is continuing through study and is some way from finishing. And the fourth child is too young to go to school and spends his day playing in the dirt. Now, which of these children do you think the father loves the most. The eldest, the next, the next, or the youngest? Which one does he love the most? And you would say, well, he loves them all equally. But I am forcing you to pick. You must pick one. And perhaps you would pick the youngest, because the youngest is the most innocent and perhaps gets more of the father's time, as he can spend time playing with him in the dirt and then of an evening sit him on his lap and feed him. And once in a while, the child would duplicate this and feed the father, putting a little morsel of food in the father's mouth. And this would bring immense joy to the father. You see, the analogy, of course, is slightly different to what you first see. You see, the last child has not been bound yet by the needs of the world and is into undertaking life in, in, for enjoyment's sake and connects with the father and gives a little bit of what he has to the father, even though it is, let us say, of little nutritional value but rather a great deal of emotional value. You see, this little child is the option for you to be. You can be serious about your work and your study. But if you can dedicate your activity and surrender it to spirit or to God, the universe, then is there not love from the child to the father and from the father to the child? And it appears that that father loves that particular child the most, yet he has not forsaken the others, but there is a connection. So in our study, in our groups that we will begin in hmm, two weeks, 
then this is where we are going. We aim to take you from, well, let us say the elder child into the younger child. to bring your bond between you and your creator, to call God to you by stripping away the apparent boundary to God. Now, if you wish, we can say that this is the connection to your spirit, if you prefer. Stripping away your veil of confusion to your spirit, to the spirit. And I say to your spirit and then to the spirit, as that will be part of the process of understanding. What more could you ask for? Do you want riches? Do you want fame? Do you want abilities that the world is yet to discover? Or are you a truth seeker? You must decide. I can but lay the breadcrumbs at your feet. Hmm. So let us continue. Brandon, I believe you may have some names on a healing list. Yes, I do. Lorna? Judith, Rosa and Matthew, Lori, Tracy, Eric, Stephen and Matthew, Marianne and Jody, Jill, Katie, Mitch, Louise and John, Matt S, Priscilla and her sister, Janet and Michael, Mike Pizzuto and their son Nick, and dogs, Parker, Paisley, and Jules. Thank you. And so it is. So let us get to the poor part of your questions. So do we have a first question, Brandon, that I may assist with? Yes, I believe Jane has the first question. Um, hi, Ignatius. Mm -hmm. um, we chatted a few weeks ago about um, my directions in life and, and to choose the path of contentedness or that of desire, um, to put it very simply. Now, thinking, I, I understand this, um, but then I'm thinking about how the application, do I abstain from planning or seeking goals and so on for my business? Um, I understand that effort is still required but do I promote my Ayurvedic practice or do I leave it to spirit I mean what are the details of that mm -hmm. my dear in essence the answer to your question is in the two stories I have told yeah in that the act of planning 
is part of everybody's daily life, to some degree. And you must sit and decide that you will travel from A to B. But the point is, is you should surrender or gain to your spirit, to the spirit truth, to the God. And you leave the accomplishment and the success or the failure, which will not be a failure, to the creator. But you make your plans and you travel from A to B and say within your heart that you do this in service to the Lord or to spirit or to mankind. And you think of <clears throat> you think of the spirit as you undertake your work, as you undertake your direction, as you begin to walk your direction. The error, the desire would be to sit and to plan your direction and then spend the money before you have earned it or to lie in the lap of luxury before you've even taken one step. Now, there is a slight contradiction here. You see, the planning process is a present moment awareness activity. Thinking and living in the future is, of course, a desirous activity. So planning is perfectly natural. But the plan must be made. And the journey must be taken. But it must be done by living in every moment with a true and open heart. Now, if, I, if you remember, I also said that you have this the ability to move fully into the heart space and let the heart be open and used and be in, be in of service, be in service. Service, of course, is not to self, but is to the absolute that you see in the other which, of course, eventually you will discover to be no more than yourself anyway. Now, the contradiction is you can sit within your meditation process and visualize your life beginning to unfold in the direction that you have picked. Let us say it's sailing a boat from port to port. And you visualize the journey from port one to the destination, port two. And as you visualize, you will create it. But then you must let go of that visual. As in the rewards or the successes or even the failures. Remember, the child puts into the father's mouth a piece of food. It is given over to the father. And it is done with pure awareness. Now, let's simplify this a little. Begin your plan, decide your goal as in port number two. Visualize the event occurring along your stepping stones of success. Know that it is not for your benefit that it is being done. But you do this work for the benefit of the father. And this alone will take you from head to heart. 
even the most difficult heart will not be able to avoid the love that is given when this is done truly. So, of course, this is a description of surrender. But it also takes awareness. Awareness to do the activity. But knowing you are unaffected by the achievement or the failure of it. Planning is not an error. Living in the future is the error. Do you understand, Jane? Have I been succinct enough? Yes, I think so. Yes, I, I do feel that I work for spirit anyway. But um, yes, no, I, I understand that I can plan because I, my heart is in that position anyway. Yes. So plan, put your stepping stones in place and all will be well. Thank you. You are already making steps within your mind at least. And if you remember, we said to you in that session that you will have time soon of things falling away from you. Mm -hmm. Yes sure that you understand that this is in process as we speak yes hmm. god bless you my dear thank you ignatius you see as you surrender your achievement to the father we surrender to you It is the circle of life, or in this case, the circle of non-life, the circle of death, if you prefer, and the circle of being. That we to you, you to us. God bless you. Brandon, do you have another question? Yes, the medium himself has a question. Would it be all right for me to ask on his behalf? Just one moment. I believe the question is about energy. Is that correct? You're correct. <laughs> hmm. The topic of energy will be the one undertaken in the next series of talks. The flow of energy through, around and along the body. Which, of course, is close to the question, I believe. So I can answer the question in a few minutes or... You can wait for a whole series of answers to come. So may yeah. I first ask, is there other questions? I saved the medium's question for last, so right. I think, um, yeah. Okay, well, let us answer that then. And I'll answer it without true understanding of the question involved and i will do so with the the what is rather like an advertisement isn't it for the next series of talks often within your work the word energy arises and the word energy, of course, can be seen as, let us call it electricity or some other type of flow of intention. But energy must be used in the correct way 
when we are talking spiritual energy. And the flow of that energy must work around and through and along the channels of the body. At times, then, energy can get rather caught in different parts of the body. Let us say in your neck or in the base of your spine. And when this energy gets caught, then it would activate different parts of that area, initially enlivening that area, but eventually the energy becoming still and stagnating and restricting the flow of the area involved. But the energy is meant to move smoothly. You could say that this is like light traveling down that diamond. And it is meant to travel smoothly, but of course there are blockages there. These inclusions do diffract or distort, <clears throat> distort the flow of light through the diamond. So I will give you an, an example. So let us say that you are generally pretty aware and you are aware of your body. And you are aware of the energy, let us say, traveling smoothly within your body. And it gives you the impression of unawareness. If everything is working okay, then you are not aware of any particular area. But there are times when, with a little more awareness, so you can look into your body and see the problems that may arise. Now, within your body is the analogy of the chakra system. And of course, different beliefs say there are many variations and in number of the chakras that you have within your body. So let us run with that. So your second chakra, a little bit below your navel, the sacral chakra, is one which looks after the organs which are associated or around that area. And of course, below we have the base chakra and above we have the solar plexus. Now, all these chakras, are uh, the three that I have mentioned, are related to the physical world. Should there be a restriction within the second chakra, or a restriction above the second chakra, then you will find this area of your body then can create or develop types of illness and illness of the associated organ. And if this energy was not traveling up or down sufficiently, it would activate all the desires of these organs. So we have the sexual organs included. So all this can lead to people potentially developing a strong sexual desire. Perhaps I'll leave that analogy there. So if you are sufficiently aware within your body, you may notice at times that the 
arousal may occur within this part of the body. And at that time, if you are sufficiently aware of it, you will watch your body following the desires of chasing another. or various other activities which could take place. And the way to change this is to first be aware, second, to meditate on the chakra above, so in this case the solar plexus, as don't forget the blockage may be somewhere between the two of them. And in meditating on the solar plexus, then the opening of the solar plexus will occur and energy would then to begin to flow upwards. Freeing the flow of the solar plexus. Sorry, feeling. Easing the flow within the sacral and the energy flowing to the solar plexus. Of course, the same could be said of the heart. If someone has a blocked heart, and of course we are talking emotional blockages, if there is a blockage here, then the heart begins to close, feel heavy, a heart made of stone, as it's sometimes described. And the heart of stone then does not give, does not allow in any emotion. And the person feels very out of order, shall we say, unaligned, untruth. And they feel like they cannot give. And they feel like I cannot receive. There is no love in the world for me. And here again, with awareness, with knowledge, the individual can see that the heart then is blocked and is, or let us say, a little cold or like stone. And the awareness, bring the attention to the heart. If you, when you see this problem, bring the attention to the area. Look, is it true? What has created this blockage? Is it true just in my mind or is it true in the location that I pick? And then, depending on what you find, you may look to the chakra above and the chakra below. Are they working? Are they open? Is my blockage in my solar plexus or my throat? Is the energy traveling through this area or is it blocked in this area? And in being open and opening it, as one lets go of the burden and the baggage of emotional beliefs and hurt. Then the understanding arises that man has held on to the problem and has thus created the difficulty in the flow of energy.
Now, you see, the answer is connected to the stories that I mentioned at the beginning. And that is, it is the belief that you are not connected that causes the problem, the belief in the blockage. The blockage, of course, is within the mind. And the mind just needs to turn its attention away from what the fault is to what the truth is. The false belief in hurt, emotional hurt, which appears very, very real. You would all know yourself if you've been through emotional difficulties. <clears throat> then they feel heavy on your shoulders. Maybe heavy of heart. Maybe elsewhere. There's a little flick of a switch. And you change from heavy hearted do open-hearted. And that may be through some simple words or the dawning of a reality or bringing awareness to the pain. So as I have mentioned before at times, your first step is to ask the question, is this true? Or do I just believe it to be true? And if you want to go to the movie analogy, then your awareness watches the pain play out on the movie screen, but is totally unaffected by it. So, the truth is, the flow of light happens through you, around you, within you. You just believe that it does not, and thus you create your own problem. And then you can run as far as you like, as fast as you like until you're exhausted. See, the story was saying, it is when you realize that that does not work, that you find your God. So in opening and clarifying all of your chakra system, the lights begin to activate within your body. And your chakra system begins to open because you stop believing that it is closed or blocked. But it is with the awareness that you must go there. And the sooner you become aware that this is okay, that's okay, this is working, and that is perfectly fine. You step back from the physicality into the awareness. And you can watch the energy arising. Now, this is fairly simple to do. And you should be able to rise your energy to your heart within a short process. Working above the heart becomes a little bit more complex. So this indeed is the moving of energy from your, from its dormant self at the base of your spine to bloom within your mind. 
Let us change these words. You will go to the love beyond understanding when you stop looking for the limited love. So the seed of energy, which has to grow through the dirt to come into the daylight and then fight all the problems and difficulties that must exist within its initial flowering to grow to be a flower or a tree or both. When there is faith in your being, faith in yourself, what will stop you becoming the tree? When you believe in the difficulty, then at best the tree will become deformed or stunted or never achieve its majesty. You are all destined to be the tree in its full potential. But you limit yourself and become a lesser version than what you truly are by not letting the energy flow through you like the diamond and the charcoal. So, Brandon, you can see the answer to your writings also within this analogy. The different levels. From the belief in obstacle to the unbelief in the obstacle and only believing in the unity in the stories the same analogy arises if you went to a temple or you visited a great saint and let us say you take your 50 dollars out of your pocket and you give it to the temple or to the saint and say, this is my donation. And the temple takes that money from you. And then begins to work on the activities of the temple. Your work is done. But should you then say, can I name that statue in my honor for my $50? Your ego then has taken hold of the giving. And your gift is now tainted. So it is not your ego when you say, I am God. It is but the truth. It is just your ego when you walk your day and you tell everybody, I am God. As you step into the belief of greatness, superiority, which is not true. So dedicate all your activity in service of spirit. 
and then you will let spirit do the work. So, Brandon, I've, have I answered the question as best as you are able to see knowing the question? Yes, you did. And you also read my mind as I was making the correlation to the work that I'm working on, which you're fully aware of as well. So, mm. Thank you. What a wonderful coincidence. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. Wow. Well. So next week, we will begin our journey of energy, which we've touched on. Until then, dedicate your activities to spirit and be aware. God bless you all. Mm-hmm.